What is the difference between quartz and quartzite? It's actually a question I get asked a lot by clients, and today I will answer it for you using six categories to compare the two materials. And stick around to the end of the video because I'll even show you a stain test. First up, let's discuss appearance and material. Quartz is actually a man-made product. It's made up, of, made up of about 90 to 93% quartz, crushed up quartz material, and seven to 10% of a resin. Think of it like a plastic binder. That's what gives it this perfectly uniform look. It will have a print on it or some kind of a pattern that can be repeated, so you can get a pretty uniform look. Quartzite, on the other hand, is a God-made material. It's actually a real stone taken out of the earth and then uh, cut and fabricated to look like slabs. So the variation will be uh, all over the place, but you can get some really beautiful natural colors. Quartz will look a little more uniform, uh, calculated, whereas quartzite is a beautiful stone look that will have a natural flow to it and no two pieces will be the same. Next up, let's talk water and heat resistance. Quartz is a little more susceptible to issues with high heat. It, since it does have that binder in it, think of it like a plastic binder, that's just the best way to think about it. If you were to take a 500 degree pot out of your stove and then set it on your countertop, there is a chance that it could start melting that resin. It's very rare and a lot of the times we're not putting stuff on our countertops that are quite that hot to cause that issue, but it is something to be aware of. And quartz, again, since it has this resin component, can be light susceptible. So it means if you put it in a kitchen under a big window, there is a chance if you choose a lighter color quartz that over time, I mean pretty like a long time, it could start to yellow. Uh, I have yet to really see this happen in a place, but I know that in properties where we've done it, we've just been a little more careful with what we put right under a big window. But truth be told, you'll probably wanna switch out your countertop material before the yellowing becomes an issue for you. Uh, quartzite does not have that issue. Since quartzite is basically a rock, just think of it that way, if you were to take a hot pot and put it on the rock, it will be totally fine. There's always a chance of temperature cracking in any kind of solid material. Uh, that's just a big variable, which I would say is not really an issue, but I just have to say it since you're watching this video. But quartzite, you can put heat on it. Quartz, I would suggest no. And as far as water resistant, again, Quartzite is a rock, so you can put water on it. There's not gonna be an issue. It is slightly more porous, but not in the way that the water will soak into the material. Quartz is also non-porous, so that means water will not get into it. You can spill something on it, leave it for a long time, and nothing will absorb into the material. So quartz, a little more heat susceptible, quartzite not. Both are good with water. So now let's talk cleaning and maintenance. First up, let's do quartz. Quartz, since it is non-porous, meaning it won't absorb much, basic cleaning is great. All you really need is a cloth or a sponge and some water. If you wanna add some disinfectant to it, you can use vinegar or you can use a product that is labeled safe for quartz. I would suggest always reading the back of your product labels for anything you use on any kind of material, uh, just to make sure that they, that they are good for that material. The only thing I'd say about quartz is you do have to be careful if you were going to use an abrasive cleaner. Over time, it could be more susceptible to scratching and uh, etching because it is that um, man-made material. Now let's switch to quartzite. Quartzite is the same thing. You can just clean it with you know, a soap, water, basic disinfectant. Again, if you're gonna use an actual product, check the label to make sure it's uh, good for quartzite but it is not going to scratch and etch as uh, easily as quartz would because it is a rock. That's really, again, just the best way to think of it. So you can be a little more uh, scrubbing onto the quartzite. Now, would I say take a metal Brillo pad to either one of them? No, I say that's probably not your best bet. Basic soap and water for both of those materials and you should be good to go. Now here's what is a little bit more controversial. If you look online, it will usually be recommended that you have your quartzite sealed yearly, every five years, whatever the product label says. But I have quartzite in my own home and I've never sealed it and I've never had an issue. And we're cooking all the time. I've even had my sons draw Sharpie on there by accident and everything has come off of my countertops very easily. So what I would say for quartzite is talk to your installer or your contractor, your designer and see what their thoughts are on that. 
You can always seal it if you want, but you really may not need to. You can tell when you get a slab home and you start putting water and oil and you know spaghetti sauce, which we'll show you later, uh, if it wipes off easily or not. And if you see any absorption or any discoloration after you wipe something off the countertop, yes, definitely go ahead and seal it. So quartzite online, you're gonna see that you should seal it. I don't necessarily feel like that's the case for every piece of that material. So you just have to see what you end up with. Now. Quartz, on the other hand, is completely sealed. It's the plastic product, so you never have to seal it at all. So really, both of these materials are rather low maintenance compared to a product like a marble, which is way more porous than quartzite. Uh, I think either one is a good option if you're worried about that care and maintenance. So now we've talked care and maintenance, we can talk a little bit about longevity, lifespan, durability of these two products. They're actually both very good options as far as durability is concerned. Now, just like I said, if you take a, a, a screwdriver and scrape it across each one of those materials, could they both get a scratch on it? Yes, of course. And over time, if you were to take a big cast iron pot and drop it on the corner of your countertop, could there be some chipping that happens? Yes. So they are both very strong materials. They're not indestructible, uh, but they are very durable for just day-to-day -day living. Uh, the lifespan for both is very high. I've seen sources say, you know, quartz lasts from 40 to 60 years and then quartzite is 50 to 100. First of all, I'd say that both of those you're going to want to switch out before that 50 to 100 year mark anyway. You're going to want to change them out just for style and design. But quartzite, again, it's a rock, so it really can last forever. It's been around forever. It could stay around forever. Uh, quartz, since it is a, you know, a resin quartz combo material, it probably would over time, perhaps the finish would break down. I'm talking in like 50 years, but you know, really, I don't think anybody's going to keep those materials around long enough to actually see that happen. So as far as durability and lifespan, I'd say they're equal. Up next is the cost of each material. Quartz is actually the more affordable option out of quartz and quartzite. It starts at about $40 to $100 a square foot, totally depends on the different pattern variation that you want, uh, or even what's popular. A lot of times what's popular at the moment can be a little more expensive. Quartzite is the more expensive option, and that's starting at typically $80 to $210 a square foot, and that is a big range. And again, the price difference in that is because one is a limited resource. Quartzite is a limited resource. It is actually, you know, harvested from the ground, brought in and fabricated to be into these slabs. So there's a lot of work that goes into it. And they are beautiful natural pieces. So they're one of a kind. Each piece is the only piece that's going to look exactly like that. So that also does drive up the cost. So really it just depends. You can get some beautiful quartz options for a good price. Uh, and many times if you have a smaller space as well, you may be able to get the more expensive quartzite in a remnant piece. If you're just doing a bathroom, always ask your designer or your fabricator and installer, hey, do you have any remnant pieces, meaning a leftover piece from another job that may be able to fit your space? So you might be actually, actually be able to get the higher priced item for a savings. Okay, so now for the stain and spill test. I'm actually here in my own kitchen. We're gonna use my countertops, which are a Taj Mahal leathered quartzite. And they have actually not been sealed. So this is a really good show of sort of the porousness or the stain uh, staining ability of the countertop. So obviously I have a good faith that they're not gonna stain. So let's see. Right here, as you see earlier, I went and did some tomato sauce and some olive oil. Obviously, here's our quartz material, and then here's my countertop with the mess on it. So all I'm going to do is just take a wet paper towel and wipe it off, and we'll see how it goes. First up, we will do my countertop right here. As you see, both totally wiped away. There's not even any oil damage, any staining or absorption. We passed the test. And now we will do the quartz. And actually both, if you see, wiped totally clean. 
So that's it. Hopefully you feel like you know the difference between quartz and quartzite now. And if you could, I would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. Uh, it would mean a lot to me so I can keep doing these videos and know it's worth my time. And if you want to see another video on the difference between quartz and granite, you can go to my video library and check that out. Or hopefully we'll be able to try and link that here. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you come back.